good news from another place is that uh, the popular uprise in, in Bangladesh uh, succeeded, getting that uh, bitch Hasina kicked away to India. Obviously, the military cooperated here because I think he's some kind of a brother in law or a cousin in law, the military commander. So he granted her safe retreat, but in the same way, but uh, 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 quite reasonably, he forced her to resign officially. Uh, this way, depriving any other entity like India, India would say, oh, they have, she has kicked out the country, she's the elite the government, she's not, she resigned. And then the the leader of the students showed maturity and understanding much better than what the unfortunate the Muslim Brotherhood leadership in Egypt show in, in 2010, 11, and 12. They insisted that the military go to the barracks and there would be a temporary government, uh, which is uh, populated by uh, technocrats, and the uh, election should be held. The date is not fixed, but as soon as possible. So this is the, I think that's a great victory for the Bengali people, and now on the Islamists to move uh, reasonably and to try to take, take the lead, leadership of the masses by putting solution on the table. And if they don't know what to say, what to happen, uh, they can interact with them. We have plenty of ideas that exactly like that. Because I think the Muslim Brotherhood there, I think they are they are empty. I don't think they have anything on the table. If, if we if we make any comparison with with, with, with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt or Jamaat Islam in Pakistan, which is semi have similar to the Muslim Brotherhood. They, they don't have something suitable for the 21st century. As with Tahrir, you know what he has. That's all that he has, unfortunately. So uh, the classical Mashaikh will be mm, be better than these two in some sense, but much worse because they were st still stuck in uh, in, in, in medieval uh, fiqh of Hanafi. Uh, so it would be a problem, but being stuck in medieval Hanafi fiqh is maybe better than than uh, empty slogans without any real program like Hilmi Tari. We see that in Afghanistan. It, it's getting things at least going into, starting to go in the right direction, although a lot of education and changes are needed. So that's that's in mind. So this is a good sign. Anyway, this should send a sign to the Arab, uh, to uh, the Arab parties and and activists. Take a take a lesson from Bangladesh, but this will not come for sheep. You have to you have to confront the military and the police, and use force when necessary and legitimate. And ultimately, many of the police people who were killing the demonstrators, they were hanged from their feet. In some places, I hear report that the demonstrator was telling the police, "Shoot us, dead if you want." And the police shot until they have no more ammunition and they got hung in their feet. That's how it works. It works. There's uh, no free lunch. You don't, you don't uh, change the regime and change things radically without paying the price in blood. But after paying the price in blood, the leader should be insist on get, getting the reward for that probably. Military out. And then go from there. So that's, 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 that's what happened in, in Bangladesh is really a good and great sign. Very great sign. Very good sign. Yeah. A, a, good, a good education for the, especially for the Arab world. Because the Arab world is supposed to be boiling now. People in the West Bank must be boiling. Jordan is boiling. Even Egypt, there are news that a, a volcano is about to erupt. So let's wait and see. But hope, hopefully they learn that lesson. And we have to broadcast to everyone that lesson. Yeah? Okay, excellent, inshallah. What else do we have? Yeah, I think that's that's it. And obviously, we still got the ongoing treachery of the Arab regimes claiming that they're going to protect Israel. Yeah, um, they have. They have I mean, Jordan, Jordan, I mean, are you expecting any moment for that to crumble? Inshallah. 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 But unfortunately, until now, the Although half of the people there, two thirds are Palestinian, but obviously the ones there, they got comfortable. They're just filling their belly and, and thinking, hell, the Palestine is just having a little bit more kids than the average. And that's it. That's not enough. You have to do something more than that. But the people have become lethargic and felt uh, partly weak and uh, intimidated. And, uh, but hopefully that's what, what we see. Uh, the same, if someone would have asked me in, uh, about the Arab Spring, is it will be in the spring or whatever. no way. Secondly, in which country it starts? It starts in the one country which is the remotest from anyone's mind, Tunisia. Tunisia was rumored in the whole Arab world at that time, and even until now, and, and before that, that it's completely francophonic, that people have lost any interest in Islam and Islamic movement, 
nothing will happen. And that one took the leadership. So don't make such estimates and such imaginary constructive what things happen. Just move, just to the action. What yeah, does I said? The military should be told, even if you participate and don't shoot the demonstrator, your place is in the barracks, no time. especially in Egypt. You have been now managing country for 60 years. It's a disgrace. Your management is a disgrace. Economically, militarily, everything. The country has have sunk into a disgrace level. It's unable to, to, to make a good deal with, uh, with Ethiopia about uh, the, the, the so-called uh, progressive dam or what's its name there, unable to have a stand in Palestine, unable to do anything, became a low step to everyone. But let's wait and see, inshallah. Yeah. Hopefully the people learn from the lessons. And it seems to be people are learning bit by bit. But example is an excellent uh, example for the time being, how to manage a popular revolution and not uh, and, and not because the military wanted to take over the government. And they said, well, no, you go in the barracks. And they dictated the government member one by one, including the, some people say this prime minister, this uh, Nobel Prize, Mohammed Yunus, or his name, some people, he has deep relation with the CIA and things like that. It will come in the daylight. They went by that he's a world, world famous economist. I think he's had a Nobel Prize economy. I don't know about which thing he got a Nobel Prize. I'm not aware about him anyway. But maybe he has done something about development economy or something like that, which may have some sound idea. Let us see what he does when we get there. We'll see. And uh, we don't know about these called deep relation with the CIA and so on. Maybe he was in some international organization, which is uh, uh, which is a front end or working with the CIA. That's all international organization like that. Maybe, for example, Amnesty International. It's a, it's, a, it's a human rights front end of the MI6. If someone works with them because he believes in human rights, meaning that he's an agent of MI6, not necessarily. That's what's available. Many people think I have to work with what's available. I wouldn't do it, but many people think this way. So we don't know. The reality will show. The reality, the reality will show. On, on, on. It is the only question mark about that, but let's see how things mature and how they develop. Some people feel that India may attack. The, I don't think that India has enough problem internally and, uh, and cracks and issues there. They will not. But if they attack, they will, they will, they will get, get a black eye. You will see. They will get, they will get smashed. They will suffer considerably. And it's clear that if it, because many Indian forces which were there uh, supporting Hazina and well, me, there are videos showing them running like crazy to the planes to escape from the country in fear of their lives. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing they can do. After escaping, do you think they'll be coming back? And the Indian government will get itself in such trouble and confrontation and break with, with uh, problem with Pakistan, flaming Kashmir, a problem with China and so on. No, no. Modi, maybe, maybe a Hindu uh, Subram assist in his heart and a uh, deep believing Mushrik, but he's not stupid. He knows how far he can go and where he should step, put the reverse gear and go back. And this time it's a reverse gear time, not for all time. So that's roughly what's going on.